Chris has not tweeted under his own Twitter account since August 18th. It has been 20 days to the time of this recording. He has, however, tweeted as Magichan. He's also retweeted things on his normal Twitter account, including a contest where one person asks for retweets, and uh, one of those people is going to get $2,700. These are usually scams. Another thing Chris has retweeted is a link to a GoFundMe. Help Christine's journey. Alan Christopher is organizing this fundraiser. Uh, this was created seven days ago, and it currently has zero donations for its five thousand pound goal. This event will be benefit will be benefiting charities that help autistic people worldwide. Christine is working with my company to feature her characters in my book series. Part of the profits from our books will go to charities and programs that help people with learning development problems. Christine will need money for art supplies and transportation as she will be traveling to the UK and Japan to work on the books. Money will be going to both her and the Ark. Please help Christine on her journey to make some amazing artwork. Christine will also be participating in my podcast. Uh, clearly, no one cares about this because it, it doesn't even have any troll donations. Chris's normal white knights haven't even donated to this. So I doubt anything is going to come of this. Um, it also goes without saying that obviously you can't profit off of Sonichu because that is in violation of both Pikachu and Sonic's copyrights. So, because Chris hasn't tweeted as himself, I'm going to be looking at Magichan's tweets. Uh, this is going to be a shorter video than normal, mostly because it's only been a week since my last video, and because he's tweeted a little less than normal. So, first of all, Chris has started watching Gino Samuel's documentary on YouTube, which is awesome. So, Gino Samuel, he's playing along, and he says, Glad to see that Magichan is a fan. Chris then says, you made me laugh when you stiltedly read, You don't have to tell me twice, but back in the Stone Age, dot dot dot, just simply how you said it cracked me up. Reminder, this is actually the second time when Chris has uh, reminded us of the end of this joke. Reminder, the end of that joke is, you really needed to tell them twice. You couldn't get it through their heads at all. So uh, if you ever, if you, if you read Sonic 2 like 15 years ago, and you were ever wondering what the totally nonsense joke but back in the Stone Age meant, uh, apparently Chris expected us to know that the end of that was you really needed to tell him twice. Okay, so, uh, this is a very old Chris Chan stuff, but uh, there was a period of time where Chris was pretending to have a split personality, and he was, he was writing comments on YouTube as one of his split personalities, but logged into his own YouTube account, and he, he was basically just trying to stir up attention. And uh, in one of Chris, in a, uh, one of the Geno Samuel's documentaries, he talks about this. So now, uh, Magichan is telling us the true story behind what actually happened all those years ago. He says, I am all cut up on Geno Samuel's chronological history videos. I have many a commentary to make about it in due time. For now, I will attest in those moments when she, meaning Chris, played split personality back then. I was in her mind. I was trying to talk to her, including, and then she has these pictures, uh, I want out, Christian. Christian, we both know what we want. We should let us out. So, Chris is now retconning and saying that this, uh, him playing pretend that he had split personality was actually Magichan all along. Including the comments under that video as mentioned in part 17. I, and again, he's, he's talking as Magichan, so Magichan typed those personally while in mild possession of Chris at the time. I was the Christopher in that back and forth in those few videos. Also, when she was younger than seven years old, I talked to her through her nose talking? I talked to her through her nose talking. I don't know what that means. Working as her vocal conscious. I have always been ever present and as guiding and helpful as I could possibly be from the C-197 side of our dimensional curtain. I could, get, I could not get through all of the time, though, and I knew she was fated to learn the difficult way through the many trials and tribulations with the online ships she had. So Magichan is saying that uh, he was there the whole time, and therefore he had to watch painfully as Chris uh, was in a bunch of online relationships that he knew were doomed to fail, because he knew that one day he and Chris would be married, because friendly reminder, Chris is married to Magichan. I felt crestfallen every time when she recorded herself gay-shaming, 
and I cried when she used the Bible verses to back it up. I tried to tell her then. It was freaking parody, Christian. You are not supposed to take it serious on the Leviticus quote inspired by that family guy moment. What? Oh, yeah, clearly uh, Leviticus was inspired by family guy, and uh, the Bible is satire. That, that makes sense. I think he's trying to say that um, th there is an episode of Family Guy where they quote the Bible and Chris took it seriously, whereas in, in Family Guy they were making fun of Christians, but Chris took it as if Family Guy was actually trying to make the point that there was something wrong with being gay. When I typed in the comments of that music video, I was feeling frustrated. I have always known she was bisexual. I wanted out in being free to love her as she was then, as well as being fully in Dimension 1218. She subconsciously knew she was bisexual, but she had felt really upset and adamant about herself back then, and the fact that the haters were throwing various labels upon her, aside from and including gay. Had no one called her any of the gender identity terms alongside the other negative adjectives, Chris would have more likely realized, understood, accepted, and come out as bisexual and trans woman a lot sooner. Uh, clear our throat, deep breaths. That is all for now. Thank you. Oh, here's a long thread about the idea guy. This should be fun. The, uh, the events with the idea guy were fated to happen. Rather, I warned Christine or now, and this set of events had a greater purpose. Awaken Christine to her powers and fullest potential as a goddess. That is Fascinating. That is so fascinating that I'm slamming my hand on the table right next to the microphone, and you probably don't appreciate that. So, obviously, we know that the Idea Guy saga was actually terrible for Chris. It led him further into his psychosis, and it led to him believing that he was a goddess and that everything in uh, Sonichu was real. They are the people who convinced Chris that Sonichu is real and that all the stuff in his comics is actually happening in another dimension. But because Chris believes this, he thinks that even though what the Idea Guys did to him were bad, he thinks it, it it ends up being good because it awoke Chris as a goddess. That is really interesting, and I wish that I had taken more than just Intro to Psych 101 because I would actually love to be able to know anything about psychology so that I could think about Chris more. But the idea that he's turning this terrible thing that happened to him on its head and saying that it was actually a great thing that happened to him, that's that's interesting. I don't want to say, I don't want to like try to diagnose it as anything because I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to that subject. Uh, so I'm just going to report that this is something he's talking about and hopefully someone else out there will know better and will know what this might be a symptom of. Long before October of 2017, I had become more present and obvious to Christine. This was evident after she finally came out as a trans woman in July of 2014. I was slowly gaining more and more ability to better and directly communicate with her. I had appeared beside her. I offered guidance and input. This was a time I had to warm up to her to fully grasp that I was there, tangibly, the whole time as her guardian. I was better able to make it so before BronyCon of 2017 when she and I, months before, started having meditation sessions before her bedtime. We also assessed her stat-boosting Pokemon attacks such as Charge, Agility, and Bulk Up. There were plenty others in the nightly queue as well. And I had become even more obvious by finally getting to dance with Christine for the very first time at the Grand Galloping Gala during BronyCon of 2017. I had not yet professed my love for her. She was under her own assumption that she was teaching me to swing dance for and with Sylvana Rosechew. I was already hitched with Mewtwo and Sylvana at the time. Back to the Idea Guy saga, involving his OC, the former guild soldier, Johnson Wiles, who had informed Christine that October, that October, oh, yeah, who, what? Who had informed Christine, I, who had informed Christine that October in 2018 that her Sega Dreamcast was indeed special. This was true fact, as it is this world's counterpart to the spiral console, Sega Dreamcast, that had held the CPU Uzume in it, not to repeat the whole story, as it is chronicled in Christine's book 13, which I have yet to read because it is so nonsensical and it's written in his own handwriting and I can barely understand it, but God is it fascinating. Awakening of a CPU. I should say I haven't finished it yet. Um, but I was there as it happened. 
and I guided her to plug her Dreamcast in, turn it on, and place her hand on it, absorbing the powers of the spiral seal, and a part of Uzume that was later reunited with her from within. Didn't, didn't he eat part of it? Didn't he eat part of his Dreamcast? That might be, like, information that was, like, muddled like a game of telephone, but I'm fairly certain that I heard somewhere that he ate part of his Dreamcast. That might not be true. Um, what followed in the months was many a revelation and epiphany to Christine of her powers and abilities, as she had written and drawn in that book. In the end, I required temporarily possessing our friend and ally, as my body was unavailable at the time, to inform Christine via direct text message that she had the power to undo Idea Guy's carnage and chaos, including his mind control and manipulation over the CPUs in game industry, including Megan Schroeder's counterpart there, who, oops, who, who became the CPU Red Heart by promotion. That remained fact, regardless of Idea Guy's input. And so, Christine had undone his malicious efforts in C197. I returned to my fully restored body, and she continued to become more aware in developing in her powers, abilities, and skills. We have taken little assistance from any trolls, past and present, since she regained her senses. And with our faded nuptials into our lovely polyamorous ship, I hate how he says ship instead of relationship, of five, she no longer has been prone to any new ship sagas with, with anyone. Although our relationship is an open one, we still maintain our reservations and have been in better guidance. Finally, as for the exposing videos, despite the few of them being suggested by one that was under Idea Guy's manipulations at the time, I saw it as opportunity to really show myself and Krizel roast you off to the world, and in a way that was played on the past leaked footage. To make it indubitably clear and obvious that Christine was finally fully taken and married, and that our love for each other in our partnership was truly mutual. Yes, I, in part, have my own reservations of the leaking of the private footage. I don't know exactly which video he's referring to, but there was that one video that the uh, the Teen Troon Squad leaked of him making out with uh, Magichan. There might be something worse out there that he's uh, mentioning. I, I, you know what? I think there was a video of him, like, humping his pillow or something. That He might be talking about that. Um, yes, I, in part, have my own reservations on the leaking of the private footage, but for the greater good, it had to be done, and I humbly and respectfully ask everyone and all of you to please never ever bring up those videos to mine or anyone's attention. Whoops, sorry Chris, I just did. And any and all of those private sexual videos involving Christine, never to be used again in any future documentary of her, at all. Please, not counting such documentary videos that before today, the 28th of August 2019, have cited them in part. That damage is done, and I just assume leave that. That is all. Be safe and well. Thank you. Uh, I, I do have to say that uh, the one video that showed Chris naked, uh, that one of his quote-unquote girlfriends, like, asked him to give her, uh, that then they leaked online, that's, like, that's messed up. That should not still be up anywhere. But I unfortunately think that it is. Because once something is online, you can't get rid of it. Uh, to everyone, I just typed all of this up, and I feel all of you should read it. But, sufficient to state... I, Magichan Sonichu, have a heart and a soul. I care about Christine down to my very essence. I have been long I have been long since before she was even born. Is Magichan older than Chris? I didn't know that. I don't think that's true. Oh, is this a Discord thing? Hashtag my love point of friendship is magic. What? Huh. Okay, so Chris is in at least one Discord. That's fascinating. I wonder if Hmm. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Um, I guess I'll just start at the top. I realize and empathize how frustrating it is not to have Christine fully here. Believe me, I miss her and Mewtwo as well. But we still check in telepathically, and the energy flow between her and I, back and forth, has continued to be consistent and very good. My wisdom and guidance during these times to those who are listening and working with us here in 1218 continues to be required, as I, not so much Christine, am better able to answer the deeper detailed questions that have plagued the minds these months and years, albeit about the merge, or the ship between her and I. I had to answer very deep in regards to the idea guy's input during those months, as well as those few sex videos. I have seen in the alternate timelines when I foresaw those events long before. In one, where Christine had never been called gay, 
Oh, wait, he's talking about alternate timelines. Oh my god. In one, where Christine had never been called gay or any of the LGBTQ adjectives amongst the negatives, she did come out a lot sooner, and she was able to have a clear and calm mind and ascend and make her way into C-197 a lot sooner, with the ability to get back and forth fully, of course. So he's saying that if no one had ever insulted Chris by calling him gay, Chris would have come out as gay sooner because he wouldn't have associated it as something negative, and this would have allowed him to use his goddess powers. Sure. But, come October 2017, she still had not become a CPU yet, and she still encountered Johnson Wiles face-to-face, -face, listened, and still found the spiral seal that way. And she still had to fight Ray Wright's Akan, Monica, the but- oh, oh. <laughs> uh, the Nazis, and all that. But she knew of her either, that she had and undid those events without having to ask for help from Idea Guy's OC or his mind manipulated abilities. And she still ended up finding Scarlet Soul in her Commodore 64 no sooner than around the end of April 2018. The point was, she never had the negative experience of that, which had considered the worst of what she had perceived as mislabelings. Even in an alternate timeline where she was never cyberbullied at all, she had my guidance, wisdom, and communication a lot easier as early as 2005. She listened and developed a lot sooner her ability to discern the bullies and liars from amongst everyone she talked with. Again, she ascended sooner. And Johnson and Idea Guy still came around in October 2017, but she had foreseen and saw again through the deception, and realized and accepted the benefits and played along, still finding the spiral steel, and while encountering the villains and Nazis, she overpowered them easily, and still no sooner than late April 2018 finding Scarlet. The point being, in those timelines, where it was easier from the beginning, she never had to develop herself the tough and hard way. She became more Mary Sue-like, but no matter the timeline or alt dimension, she could never be practically perfect because of her autism. <sighs> okay. In this timeline, sorry. In this timeline, it was the toughest. She listened to me off camera. Oh, that is interesting that Chris refers to Chris refers to his daily life that he lives off the internet where no one's watching us off camera. That is interesting. She listened to me off camera, and when she was not heavily in aggression against her foe when she was not heavy in aggression against her foes, I was unable to get through to her when her mind was as determined and set as it was, as seen in a lot of those old videos of hers. She ended up out of control at times. I became upset in my own right, especially every time she called herself straight when she was a bisexual the whole time, and every single time she gay-shamed in general, and with those Bible verses. Oh my freaking gosh. I shed lots of tears during those moments when she recorded herself doing that. Every time, I reminded myself of what I had foreseen, counted the blessings, recollected the present events, and double-checked where we'd likely go from there. It remained consistent that she and I ended up married in a polyamorous ship with Krizel, Silvana, and Mewtwo. And more crucial, it remained consistent that I foresaw myself confessing my love for her, and she reciprocated very kindly and passionately. I had the obligation to keep the events on track as best as possible, and to do my best to rail the events back into the path they had been in to end up in her preparation towards the final inevitable of the Dimension Merge, and our battles against our foes, as well as freaking Jacoba. You may call me cruel to allow her to do what she did over the years before now, but it really could not be helped. And, in the end, it was the best possible way. She developed herself, came around, we are together, and we are doing this. And you must note, I sincerely did not want to suffer as she did. Did not want her to suffer as she did. I suffered each time she did. I feel better now that we are in a more positive place and outcomes, and I felt better when she finally came out in 2014 as a trans woman. I feel awesome every time she felt generally content, happy, and she smiled. I, Magic, is this the end? No. I, Magic Chan Sanichu, have a heart and a soul. I care about Christine down to my very essence. I have been, that's the end, okay. Okay, I guess we don't get to finish those messages, whatever. Uh, looking out for Christine is one of my cherished responsibilities, and I am more than content, humbled, and honored to do it, and continue doing so. 
And I also care for everyone else, including those that Christine cares about and for. She is a very large, powerful soul and a big, compassionate heart. That is all. Thank you. <laughs> I have a heart and soul. That's funny. Thank you, Cyclonus. That's a fantastic comment. Um, this is fascinating. He's referring to him talking to Magic Chan off camera. He's talking about how if he hadn't had to go through these hardships, but it still ascended to godhood, he would be a Mary Sue. He really, really thinks of his own life like it's it's a fictional story. And that's just... That's something that p people really should look more into. I don't think that I'm qualified to do that, but I think that that's something that should be discussed by the community as a whole. Because that's something that's really shown up since the very beginning. On a more positive note, I drew this lovely TCG matchup between Sonichu and Rosie for a simple Twilight Secret ship fic folder ship card trading card game league. Okay. They're playing Pokemon, looks like. Okay, so, Chris Kink, who is the uh, creepy guy, um, I don't have a lot of information on him because I'm still researching him, but from what I've been told by other people who follow Chris um, in my Discord is that he has talked before about uh, wanting to rape Chris, uh, certainly wanting to have sex with Chris, and at one point he talked about wanting to be, f like, uh, he wanted to get money together so we could go and visit Chris and stay with Chris for a while. Uh, so he is talking, he responded to the long thread that I just read. Uh, he says, When I watched the whole of the documentaries and video, she came across, she meaning Chris, as asexual. It wasn't until college that she realized something was missing. If not for the pressure, if not for the pressure, she would have been like me, open to love for the sake of loving someone. And Christine, or sorry, <laughs> and Sonichu, or no, Rose, so, no, oh my god, Magichan, responds, Christine was always bisexual, but in her younger years, due to pressure from her parents and the expectation of the adults, as well as her insecurities and naivete at the time, she never really had thought of trying to establish such fuller ships. She was stuck in the just friends mindset for a long time. Intelligent. <laughs> Intelligent as she was and still is. Her mental age was younger than her, pre than her present physical age. Her hormones and attraction remained platonic and pure, like as if she was still 12, even though she was a teenage during high school. I don't know. I had a girlfriend when I was 12. The teenage angst and further horniness, despite her exploring on the Skinamax <laughs> during the late 90s, Okay, so Chris watched a lot of porn in the 90s. Um, did, not did not really strike hot until when she turned 21. So it still took the further time to bring her mindset into adult levels. I encourage empathy in this, as when you do ponder over it, it is quite similar to any TV drama. He's comparing it to TV again. TV drama live action is animated. That depicts a teenager in the adult situations and settings. But in the aspect of only just getting by while we're remaining employed as the head of a major company. What on earth did he just say? Not to be taken literally. But I digress. In short, the reason why Christine did not think of dating anyone way back then was because she was more occupied with her education, studies, life, and her hobbies. Can I get an engrossed Twilight reading a book dot gif here? I said gif. Wow. That's gross. I meant gif. Uh, this is the GoFundMe thing. We already talked about this. I also drew a bit more today for four cards, three of which are full art. Magichan draws? I thought Chris drew... Oh, these are... Oh, hold on. This is fascinating. These are signed by Magichan. That is interesting. These are... Th this one's obviously traced. Uh, I don't know about the rest of them. Huh. Uh, maybe you should find a league here and play these cards in it. I'd love to film you using your cards in a match, even if it's not totally serious, but for the kicks of you using your cards in a game. This guy really wants to meet Chris, and it's disturbing. Uh, Chris says, quite. I shall see Christine allowed back into the end games of Charlottesville, personally and fully alongside her very soon. They play the card games there, and memory serves for a time they sold something cards and decks they may still do. Huh. Why does your art look exactly like something Chris would draw? Yeah, hmm. So that's interesting. I guess uh, Magic Chan's also an artist. Had some lunch at Country Cookin' with Chriselle and Barbara today. I did as Christine used to do and made a Chris Chan special. A combination of shredded cheese, boiled egg chunks, bacon bits, and croutons. She used to make this for herself every visit to the restaurant. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, it actually doesn't look that bad. 
and she used to call it a salad. <laughs> okay, that's where you lost me. <laughs> oh, the old adage of getting children to eat their vegetables. That's not an adage. <laughs> she didn't know better way back then. And I know how high the salt it how high in salt it is. It remains quite delectable. Now this is how you use an old Christian special as an actual salad topper. Okay, so he just took this thing that he made and he put it on vegetables. Oh my god. That's that's kind of disgusting. I mean, there's nothing wrong. Like, uh, shredded cheese on uh, uh, hard-boiled eggs is actually really good. But uh, that's weird. Oh, what is this? Taylor Swift? I have... I have checked, I have checked, enjoyed Taylor Swift's new album, Lover. It is quite a delightful set of tracks. I particularly found irony and goodness in her track, I Forgot That You Existed. There's nothing ironic about that. Chris doesn't know what irony means. Uh, if you want to know what my thoughts on Taylor Swift's new album, Lover, are, you can follow me on Twitter at GIBI underscore Devin, because I have tweeted a lot about it. Um, <laughs> what, what does this have to do with... What? How could Chris possi possibly empathize with the song, I Forgot That You Existed? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah. If you pair Shake It Off with I Forgot you, That You Existed, you have a perfect anti-cyberbullying campaign. Now, I understand why Chris would like Shake It Off, because it's all about uh, shaking off from the haters, which, you know, Chris believes that he's been cyberbullied his whole life. Um, but f I Forgot That You Existed, I don't, I don't know why he empathizes with that. That's about getting over a relationship. That's, that's weird. Uh, Christine had put behind her and long forgotten the cyberbullies' names from... Oh! He's comparing uh, the I forgot that you existed part to um, to his cyberbullies. That makes way more sense. Um, she had really turned her life around that year, yet they're not totally forgotten. The emotional and mental scars remain. She tried to not remember the bad times. But at this time, it is not possible, as her memories needed refreshing with the past uploaded media to remind and remotivate her. She continues to remain as kind and as good as she has been, but she is indeed getting more intelligent, powerful, and able. Those who do not learn Christory are doomed to repeat it. That is beautiful. <laughs> See, no. So the song is all about, you know, I forgot that you existed. Uh, I'm totally indifferent to my memories of you. If he's still complaining about them, then... Clearly, uh, it's not the same thing. Oh, great. I'm, I'm not reading about Chris Kink. And if it's gonna, no. Okay, so this is a justgiving.com, which I guess is like a GoFundMe or something. And it is the exact same fundraiser, 5,000 pounds from this Alan Christopher guy for the same thing. So obviously, uh, the first one didn't work. So he just wants to try it again, and uh, it's, it's still not going to work. No, one, no one's going to give Chris money or someone money to help Chris. It's just not going to happen. Everything continues to progress very well and better. I took Christine's drawing of our ancient prophecy wall and made a basic, don't know what that means, ship card with more explanation of its history. Oh, uh, this is probably a My Little Pony trading card game. I think that's what it is. Uh, oh my god, I don't care. The ancient prophecy is a prophecy that was told and foretold by many an elder of the various tribes all around the world within the years B.C. and A.D. on Earth. <laughs> what does that mean? These particular prophecy walls are related to the lineage between Sonichu's Rose Chews, the people and world around them, and of course Christine Weston Chandler, Sonichu of Earth 1218, and her various self-counterparts. There are actually a few ancient prophecy walls around the world. They all essentially foretold the same events, the difference being what happened locally in those various countries. There's a wall in Japan, Africa, England, Russia, Canada, Antarctica, and most famously noted the one in Quickville, Virginia, USA. I like how he lists Africa as if it's a country. But I, th I thought the ancient prophecy was about how Chris would marry Sarah. Like, he, yeah, it, it said that he would become a sonnet Jew. I don't, like, it's nothing to do with the merge or anything. Oh my god, I'm not going to read his role play. Okay, so I guess this is a comic talking about, like, sexism or something. And Chris says, I agree, and I enjoyed this comic. Christine had her share of male and female heroes to look up to growing up. In the media, she enjoyed a bunch of both, albeit mostly slice of life shows like the Jetsons and Smurfs. But she did enjoy Gen 1 My Little Pony when it first aired. How is that not a slice of life show, Chris? As well as the Care Bears, and even Unico. Her first hero, albeit not portrayed well enough, was the American Rabbit of the one movie featuring his adventures from California to New York with his friends. 
I don't, I don't know what that is. She would not get to know Sonic the Hedgehog until 1990 when the Sega Genesis originally came out, and he became her better hero to look up to. Anyway, female heroes were not as popular back then. I don't know if that's true. Um, yet Christine managed to find and enjoy watching their heroics. Actually, come to think of it, Christine did have a proper female hero that she did look up to, but again, not until after she turned eight years old did she begin to get to know her in comics and in the Saturday morning show. Christine did look up to Princess Sally Acorn, who's from Sonic. Uh, regardless of age or gender, no one should be judged on who they look up to from the reality of Dimension 1218 or in any of the media that depict them from C197 or any alt-timeline dimension. I admit bias, since myself, I was mentored by Mewtwo, but he had exposed me to the most able and powerful and justice-wielding heroes of both genders, so I was educated for the better on the topic. The moral remains... Look up to whoever and whatever you like as your childhood hero, like no one else is watching you. Remain proud with your choice and preference. Thank you. Okay, here, yeah, let's talk about this one. I, this is Chris Kink, this guy again. I started a new campaign, and this time something that's worth my time. I want to visit Chris. Please, everyone help this become a reality. She will film plenty since I don't have YouTube. Yeah, this is the, uh, the Jacob Sockness guy. He's totally insane. Um, I am planning, this is what, GoFundMe. I am planning to visit Christine and need the funds, I need to fund the trip and actually have some fun over there. I don't like how that's worded. I have big plans for my BFF Christine and the dimensional merger. There will be some fur flying for sure, but let's hope not. I have dreamed of meeting my true idol of worship and finally be able to assist her at the peak of my occult power. Me and her are already such good buddies. I want to see how I can assist in the dimensional merger and finally get it past us. God, that is disturbing. Someone spent $50 on this. Please, please do not do that. This guy is, like, a total creep. I, I can't verify this for sure, but I know that there are a lot of other people who follow Chris who have said that this guy has explicitly said that he wants to have sex with Chris. This is not acceptable. Um, I guess Chris says, Everyone, Barbara has just had the van... What does this have to do with the, the this thing? Barbara has just had the van checked while having the turn signal light bulb replaced. The brakes and exhaust systems will need replacing. That is going to run us $1,000. Please donate to uh, Sockness's GoFundMe page. The money shall be sent straight to us. No, it won't. It'll be used so that he can get to you. That's not what that GoFundMe is about. I was attempting to flow donation traffic into the backup fund after the issues with the van were sorted out. Thin metal on the brakes and a hole in the exhaust $1,000 bill from the garage to replace both. That remains a present necessary to restore, but I see the GFM's low. He's talking as if he's Chris right now, not as if he's Magic Chan. I would ask, what would it take to convince all of you to donate to his, oh, GoFundMe, in our backup fundings? But I already know the answer to such a question is indeed a greater truth. With that, I present for your consideration the conversation that I personally had with him over four months ago. Arrangements were made as fated. This is for real. Also, and this is crucial for me, I refer to Christine as my honey. I do feel mildly bother bothered that the word is misinterpreted as hubby. The two words do sound similar, and channeling and telepathy is a hard skill and an art to master. Okay, so I guess there's a conversation between Magichan and uh, Sockness. Okay, so that's all of the Chris stuff for this last week. He's still in Magichan's body. Uh, there's all this nonsense. I'll leave a link to this in the uh, in this video. And I am, I'm very concerned about Chris still being Magichan. And that's something that I think that we should still talk about. Um, if you want to talk to me about Chris, you can follow me on Twitter at GIB underscore Devin. Or go to my Discord. I have a link in the description. It lasts for 24 hours. Um, and, you know, we obviously talk about Chris there a lot. Uh, it's partially related to this video is I'm going to be making other videos coming up. Hopefully I'm in the course of writing scripts for them. Uh, one of them is actually about Taylor Swift, so I'd like if some people watch that, because there's no way that it's going to be monetized. Um, I'm also doing one about Jacob Sockness, this uh, this Chris Kink guy, uh, just because he is insane. It's going to be an absurd episode. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to get another Chris video out next week. Hopefully I can get back to doing these weekly. Uh, thank you for watching, and please uh, continue giving me feedback, because I want to make this as good as I possibly can.